What up, fuckers? Welcome to another episode of Guys We Fuck. It's the anti slut shaming podcast. I'm Corinne Fisher. I'm Christina Hutchinson. Welcome. Welcome to the show, everybody. Yay. Are you following us on social media? You fucking better be. That would be helpful. I know we give you some tasks every week, guys, but this Do a little was homework. This was the the compromise that we made with it, the show being free. There has yeah. to be something. Nothing yeah. in life is free. No, we appreciate exactly. you. We love you. It's an exchange of energy. We hope you're well, but we also hope that you're following us on Twitter, Instagram, yeah. and TikTok. Yeah, if you're not, fuck you. <laughs> Okay. That's maybe you're, maybe you're Seriously. not on. Honestly, if you're not online, God bless you. But then anytime someone uh, like DMs me and they're not following me and they're like, I love you, I go, not, not enough. Not that much. <laughs> what not the enough. fuck? Why? I would never do that. I would well, never DM somebody that I, that I like and admire and not follow them. Well, my favorite move is when people ask to be on the show and they're not following me and then you go, you got to be out of your goddamn mind. When Just, a comic f- asks me to be on the show and they're not following me, I mean, even a comic decent follow me, message me and then unfollow me. Right. At least do Play something. Play the game a little bit. It's insulting. It's like, have you ever tried to court anyone in your entire life? Probably not. Um, our special day is our debut comedy special out on youtube.com slash guys we fucked without the you and fucked. You're going to want to make sure you've watched that at least a good dozen times. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the comments are great. Everyone's like, I was bullied into coming here. <laughs> but then I liked it. Worked. It worked. Hey, and I liked it. We're tricking you, but it's for something good in the long run. So just trust us. Yeah. Subscribe to that YouTube channel, channel too. We have full episodes. I know you guys have been asking for a long time. It's there. Well, the views aren't the, the views aren't reflecting how many people ask crickets. To see them. So so they're they're there fuck every, you. every week. <laughs> When the episode goes live um, everywhere, so not when it goes live for Lumine, when it goes live everywhere, that is when it also is on YouTube by 10 a.m. I did it 6 a.m. last week because I was playing with different times, but it's there mo- uh, Play Friday the morning. Play it in the background. So you know if you want to see what's happening, you want to see the body language, a lot of people commented that they wanted to see the body language on the Stephen Jenkins interview. Mm, yeah. I did not want to sit next to him because I was a little nervous. Uh, the body language isn't bad. I didn't think. No, that was good. I mean, yeah, that's why, because a lot of people were like, oh, that was weird. And I was like, I honestly didn't find the interview to be weird. I just, no. he's a famous person. He can't. He's a weirdo, but he like. can't talk a lot of, about his whole like sex yeah. history. Yeah. Also, like being that famous in the 90s is, is and still like kind of, re- and then having new music, but then reliving the 90s fame. Like, I can't imagine. Like, I was all like, play, do, play. How's it going to be? You know, just kind of like I'm forcing him to live in the past. <laughs> um, but whatever. <laughs> all right. If you want to email us, it's sorry about last night show at gmail.com make that subject line very specific and fun and interesting but you know don't lie to us um subject line was i a bitch for not posting my boyfriend on instagram yes maybe we're gonna figure mm-hmm. this out mm-hmm. uh-oh mike was triggered in the corner oh, wow <laughs> uh, maybe not everything's for social media <laughs> hi corinne and christina <laughs> especially if you're not the only one uh first of course i must write about how much i absolutely love you guys thank you for being incredible role models <sighs> We don't want, no, I'm kidding. Um, for what a woman looks like. <laughs> oh, fuck like. you, bitch. Oh, we just wanted to be comedians. Um, <laughs> I have learned so much from you guys, and y'all have opened my mind time after time. Thank you for standing up for things loudly, boldly, and consistency. You know what that leaves us with? Less Instagram followers. Yep. <laughs> and thanks for being funny as fuck. We literally just had a company meeting about it before. Again, the, before single as hell. started rolling. <laughs> funny as fuck, single as hell. The company meeting is me and Christina turning our backs on Mike and talking to each other. Yeah. Well, he sets up here. the camera. Um <laughs> <laughs> He's allowed to be in the room, though. That's pretty cool. That's nice of us. We're al- we, we didn't allow even make him to be here. You know what? We actually, we, you're the only one on the team who we didn't uh, make sign an NDA. Well, yeah, you know I'm very Jersey strong and loyal. Yeah, you know, That's you know what, I'm not gonna. Snitch. I'll go to your fucking house. Yeah, I don't. I don't tell your mother. I'm not a Fed. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll call your fucking mom. Um. Anyway, my question is based off of a conversation you had on the Luminary exclusive episode. Your boyfriend is fucking your sister. <laughs> oh, what an epic one! Mm. In this episode, you talk about when men won't post about their girlfriends on Insta, uh, and Mike talked about an issue he had with <laughs> they, with Lex. It says on here. <laughs> wait, wait, what was? <laughs> what, are, what was They're the issue? Naming your girlfriend, your ex girlfriend. Yeah, you've named her, right? Oh, I don't care. Yeah, no, he had. I don't give a shit. That Go she with would, God. That she, oh, wow. He's not religious at all. <laughs> that she would never post him, and I felt my yes, stomach okay. drop because I was that girl. Mm. Oh, no. That issue. Yeah, big one. And hey, it's me, Lex, here to apologize. <laughs> um, now that Mike's on air, I wanted to change my ways. <laughs> I, I forgot how Mike's big his coming. dick is, but we, we the, the girls remind us week after week. He's literally flooded with DMs. 
If, if you post oh, one more God. robe picture. I don't like that you're laughing. Oh, my what? God. This what? man posts one more robe picture on his You're Insta. just getting so much sex from this podcast that I am not getting any sex from this podcast. Neither of us. And it's really, yeah, it's really backwards. And it's really indicative of the way society treats women. And I've mm. mentioned a million times how much I appreciate it. Cool. Well, go out there and find hot guys for us, Mike. Maybe that's how you say you appreciate it. I, I, uh, oh, listen, I... I I would happily go out there and find hot guys for you guys, but you guys haven't put the request in. Okay, well, this is our formal, formal submission. Request. All right, let's do it. I, I'm not going to want that. This. I'll yeah. do it. Yeah. Well, the I thing is, I've had people that I connected with uh, other ways um, then find out about the podcast, listen to it, and say it wasn't that bad. And that's the best <laughs> the podcast has worked for Listen, me. also, Christina, a word of caution. Uh, I, I'm happy to set you up with somebody, but it may ruin your life. Ask Corinne. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> eh, it's better than being bored. So yeah. sure, I wasn't. I wasn't bored during that relationship. That's, that's for sure, and that's all I want. You know, I want happiness and mutual respect. But yeah, you know, yeah. that's uh, you know, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so two months into seeing, <laughs> I mean, I, I feel like the part types, the times that we interject are the highlights of the show. I agree. <laughs> when we stop talking about the writers' problems and we just go back to our own, I think that's what people tune in for. That's what it's about. <laughs> So two months into seeing someone a day after we decided to make it official, we went to the grocery store and he was taking a dumb video of me walking back to the car and posted it on his Insta story in the name of honesty. She caps it. Gosh. I was like, hey, I just want you to know that I probably won't post a ton about you on my Insta story because I am a musician and I want to keep my Insta page about m my music life. Mm -hmm. OK, that makes sense. Yeah. And also want to appear single. Uh Okay. Be well, honest. that's a strategy. Frank and I actually talked a lot, talked a lot about employing that same strategy when we were look, dating. I will say, when a guy, hot guy follows me, the first thing I look at is if he has a girlfriend. If he does, I'm like, what a waste. Yeah, what a waste so, of my, everyone's time and energy. Yep. I can't even believe I read that. Yep. Could have been reading a book. <laughs> um, and I don't want my page to be about me being in a relationship. Yeah. Maybe sometimes you should just keep your mouth shut and not be so honest. I don't know. No, uh -huh. you should be that fucking honest. Yeah. I mean, I would have worded the I want to appear to be single better because if the person's not in the entertainment business, they're never going to understand the strategy behind that but mm. i do agree with you and unfortunately we live in a world where people who appear to be single get more opportunities because people want to get fucked mm -hmm, they do uh i honestly don't remember his reaction right then but over the course of our relationship this definitely came up i posted him on my story occasionally and i told him i wanted everyone in our life to know we are dating and brought him around to everything i was proud to be with him and wanted my actual friends and family to know i loved this man that's nice but in a lot of arguments, he was pretty jealous and he would continually bring this Insta story point up <laughs> about how I wanted to seem single as a musician, which is fair. I did. A lot of arguments were around accusations that I wanted to sleep with other people, controlling what I wear, controlling what I do as an artist, oh, no. getting to that cute, possessive, emotionally cute. abusive place. And that ain't cute. I think she was using it ironically. Okay. <laughs> I, hope. I, hope so. <laughs> I think a lot of these arguments stemmed from number one him sucking as a person sometimes <laughs> yeah we're all uh, but two i def hold some guilt for saying the phrase appearing single see we're on the same page girl um and not spurring an entire narrative in his mind about how i want to fuck every man who sees me perform which is like him missing the point on such a large level because like you're doing it from an entrepreneurial standpoint which any fucking business bitch would understand and, and any see. man if he was performing would also get that he's so short-sighted Men are men literally think that we are so much more interested in fucking them than we actually are. I know. We don't want to fuck you that much. Yeah, because you don't even try hard. It's we want other things. We right. want success and uh, yeah, we want money. We don't want yours. We want to make an impact any. on the world. We don't have any. <laughs> and if you do, call us. <sighs> God. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. This far into the game, and I don't know a friend with a, a with a with a pool, and I would say I don't know one with a boat, but John Campanelli's dad does have a boat yeah. and he lets us sit on it when it's docked. <laughs> <laughs> Live in the dream. Chad, I made that up. So you okay. <laughs> we, we've broken up, but I went back to the, the writer. Right. We, we've broken up, but I'm wondering how to navigate things like this as oh. an artist in new relationships. Okay. How do I more gently let someone know? They aren't going to be a big part of my online presence. Is that even fair to do? Do I just lie and say it's not about me appearing single, even though it kind of is? Like, men can be stupid, and a, uh, a stream is a stream, and if you buy my merchandise because you think you can sleep with me, then that's on you. And I'm trying to run a business where being sexy is in the brand, mm -hmm. and singing about sex is part of it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to clarify, I am not on stage saying you can fuck me if you buy my merch or anything like that. Well, yeah, but that, it's, it's part of the business it's strategy. strategy. We get it. Uh, 
Uh, I guess, am I a bitch for telling my ex he won't be on my Insta story because appearing single is good for business? No. And do you think saying this to him is a reason that he became super jealous and possessive? No, he was insecure. Yeah, but... And he took it and he took it the wrong way. Yeah, well, you saying it just revealed his insecurity faster. Uh, I, with a therapist, have come to the realization that he was emotionally abusive. I mean, I think uh, it seems like everyone's coming to that realization yeah, with their therapist. Yeah, being jealous doesn't mean emotionally abusive necessarily. He was trying to control you, but you didn't let it happen. Guys, as I've said on the podcast many times before... Um, um, every emotion uh, a relationship in my emotionally opinion abusive. is emotionally abusive and mm. not healthy um, but I am always I really truly I think the I really feel this way um, but I am always having these thoughts of if I never said that one comment could things have ended differently and it's actually my fault he was jealous no, no. it's his fucking fault thanks for all you do a very loyal fucker for life okay girl okay sorry there's a Mike is raising his hand from the booth I, I just want to add all right so like like because I was mentioned specifically in this email we, yeah, we get it. I and know, I want I to I want to bring up why uh so she's in the right to do what she did and it's different because in there my, was no performer right and exactly right so when when I was going through that with my ex there was no we, I had the same talk with her right but there was no talk uh, uh, about a business strategy of any kind exactly. there was no business that needed to benefit from one of you appearing single 100% and there was no artistic endeavor there was right. no reason yeah. for me to not be on the feed because yeah. she was just a public person and public people and she was very invested in Instagram as like a way to pass her time so it was Ugh. like an extension so she's of not her. a public person not a public yeah. person yeah right. or okay. a, a private person a normal person is yeah what I mean. she's yeah. a regular normie she's a normie so what i wanted to bring up though was at this time when we were having these conversations i cited she cited corinne as an example do you remember when you you used to post the um the ass shots corinne yes okay so that came up because somehow i always get dragged into things no no, no, no i don't want to this was so i used booties you as, out i mean you, you were the example because she said well like corinne has a boyfriend and she's posting pictures like like that is that a, to like, james's credit he would take them sometimes uh -huh. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh -huh. I don't want to always say bad things about him. He had he had a lot of very good qualities. So I said Corinne does that because it it's part of like Corinne's persona. Right. That's part of like the she wasn't guys trying to like feel. She wasn't a trying to appear single though. She also never she was hit. Just right. like, Here's my nice ass. No, right. it was just exactly. a joke because we had to, we, we, there was a while when we made so many jokes about me having a fat ass in the podcast and we weren't um, videotaping it. So then I was like, oh, let me post this online. Right. So you're a public person. Yeah. And you have uh, your Instagram handle is an important aspect of what you do professionally. Part of your business. Sure. Yeah. Hundred percent. So that was why when that argument got brought into our relationship, I you're was like, like you're not doing that. Yeah. Like Corinne's what? doing that, so it's different. Like if. What if she and James oh, she wanted this. to post an ass shot. No, she just was like, it, it was basically like, um, the conversation was really about just like posting content specifically on Instagram. And right, I was like, but you she's not in, in the entertainment industry. Right. No one gives a fuck about you except some guy trying to fuck you right. in, so in she, that aspect. She like, posts like a picture of her in a bikini or something like that. So it's okay. not but like we're not trying shot, to stop but, her of do, do, doing yeah, that because then I would, yeah, but then I would agree with her. Why wouldn't, it's not that I was trying to stop her from doing that. I was, I, my problem was that she was doing it and there was no sign of me. Mm -hmm. So it was, and kind there was of a right, sign like, of you on, uh, of her on yours. Yeah. hundred percent. I I would post pictures of us all the time. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I think, I think this is oddly enough in this day and age, I think it's a real conversation that we have to have with our partners i've had it with every partner that i've had since we've we've had this show it was actually a large discussion that james and i had uh we had like a full sit down publicity meeting about mm -hmm. how i would have referred to him on the show which now legally works for me um <laughs> if i would say his name if you know all these things it uh it that, that was all part of the discussion we had yeah. which is why i was very angry at him when things flipped and then he was all of a sudden angry that I was talking about him and I was like well if you agree that I can talk about you on the show you agreed to me being able to talk about you for the Good duration of the relationship which includes the breakup right so sorry yeah. um but yeah i mean that it's it that this is part of it so i mean i totally understand what you're doing i agree that it is important to no no one wants to go and see a, even me as a straight woman i don't want to go see a hot singer and her boyfriend it's i pictures of people and their boyfriends i find to be so boring and, and also to, or girlfriends honestly yeah and we just we, it's just uh we share too much now yeah there's days. very like, few people normal people are oversharing and it's weird yeah um so I, I think even if you weren't in the entertainment industry, like it's just like you don't even fucking need to know that. Like, and it just you could say it in a different way, but at the same time, how dope would it be to be with a guy that kind of understood that? 
You know what I mean? So yeah. that's why I'm like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to tell you to say it in a different way because you're just saying the truth. Mm-hmm. And if you say it kindly, it's okay. Like, and if the person has an insecurity, maybe that's a great opportunity for you guys to address it. And so it doesn't spiral out into this like controlling thing. I think um, you also, I think you just need to add a little bit more after the part where you say, I need to appear single. You need to say, I need to appear, appear single but, because oh, yeah. like, I think you just need to clarify because if you're just saying that out of nowhere, yeah. someone not in the industry, they could add there because is not going to understand why and you say it's not because i'm trying to fuck other people but it's because there is i am using my sexuality as a woman which is very powerful as a bargaining chip in this business that is already um you know kind of patriarchal and if Mm -hmm. they can't understand that i mean again like yeah frank and i had a really long conversation about that and we both agreed that we would both appear you know i think it, it changed when we like got too mushy later on but like in the beginning that we would both appear as if we were single because it was helpful to both of our careers and neither of us felt weird about that or jealous about that and we both understood each other Uh, and I mean I think you just need someone being in the entertainment business in general as a woman you need someone who's really confident because say you skyrocket to fame like you want someone who's going to be happy for you Mm -hmm. not disappointed in you not Mm -hmm. not like oh I have to share her with other people now you want someone who's rooting you on the same way men constantly seem to be able to find a cheerleader you also need a cheerleader yeah it's part of the deal it's just part of the deal when you're dating you this, this, you know, the writer. Writer, yeah. Um, it's just part of the deal. Like, like the fact that she was honest about. The, I had yeah. to pull this out of my ex. That's annoying. I had to literally have these conversations and say, "This is something that's bothering me because I feel like I'm hidden, and it's like clear because you're you're always in your phone on Instagram. So this obviously you're thinking about this. This is something that matters to yeah. you. Whereas this is a upfront conversation about her career. I mean, like, I don't think she did anything wrong, and I think she is 100 percent right to do that moving forward the way she did it and the last dude was just not the guy because you insecure. know what maybe you could say like i had a previous partner where i had this discussion and i'm not sure you know if i could have said it differently but he didn't take it well and so it's something i really want to talk about up front mm-hmm you know, I think so, we can, it, so we can nip this in the butt. Yeah, it's important. I don't think you should lie or you should make up reasons why. Like, I think you should be very clear about your uh, your career, its importance to you, and how the strategy that you have decided on your own that you will be employing, and that are the, those are the conditions under which that person must, must enter the relationship. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I mean, listen, like people have agreed to such conditions before and been confident for the start, and then their weakness starts to show over time. You don't have control over that, though. As long as you are up front about it in the beginning you, i mean you can never control how other people will react over time yeah or, and know. their reactions are, are telltale signs let them let them show you who they are yeah absolutely and come see us live atlanta georgia september 10th which is a saturday at 7 p.m corinne and i are co-headlining the center stage theater get tickets now we want to sell that out because we would love to do a big theater tour and this is one of our test dates so let's go atl yeah and heads up you pick your own seats so like if this is not general admission like the sooner you buy your tickets the closer you are to the stage you get a better opportunity that you're going to come on stage yeah that will see you that will pick you a lot a lot of fun things um and then also uh, i'm doing a couple uh solo dates to warm up for the theaters uh pittsburgh pennsylvania long time we needed this to happen so finally on saturday july 30th i will be headlining bottle rocket social hall again pittsburgh pennsylvania and then cleveland ohio uh i will be doing four shows at hilarities friday august 26th and uh 27th i'll be there with my girl wendy steiner and of course you can listen to me and shane smith roast and dissect the news every saturday on without a country which is available on youtube yay and then if you are listening to this on luminary today is the last day for me to raise money for my short film it's the towerfilm.com we're trying to raise 40 grand if we don't raise 40 grand we don't get any of the money we raised so um if you have uh money to donate the towerfilm.com is where you will go to the kickstarter campaign we have a lot of perks including um you can't watch the film unless you contribute 
cute. And then um, you have access to Kevin McAllister Hutchinson's private Instagram account that I've been running for a few years now. And yeah, a lot of cool perks. So if you have the money, thetowerfilm.com, go over and donate. And make sure to rate and review and follow Guys We Fucked on Apple Podcasts that bumps us up in the comedy charts, keeps us in the top 200 so that people can keep discovering the beautiful goodness that is Guys We Fucked. And of course, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube and our TikTok. It's youtube.com slash guys we fucked without the you and fucked and then guys we fucked without the you and fucked on tiktok lots yeah. of great stuff there um yeah. oh okay you have something to talk about from your book oh yeah yeah i just wanted to share pieces of information that i'm getting uh about this is the book woman code perfect your cycle amplify your fertility supercharge your sex drive and become a power source um all of us listening to this uh, episode have one thing in common and that's we came out of a woman's body and so i feel like it behooves us to understand what the fuck is going on inside of our bodies and so i just wanted to read some some excerpts uh from chapter two of this book and it's just these are just stats that i think are good to know um and if you're a, a straight guy listening to this or a bisexual guy a guy who sleeps with women um you know on a first date if if a woman finds out you know this information that's a turn on okay even if you pretend to give a shit you don't actually give a <laughs> shit we'll still be aroused by it okay <laughs> mike new, mike's eyes just lit I'm up i'm taking notes <laughs> well thank you new research from the national institutes of health confirmed that women's menstrual health acts as a gauge of her vitality and overall mm. health throughout her life it's no surprise then that some of my patients uh with chronic symptoms were well on their way to obesity diabetes hypertension heart disease infertility premature aging and gallbladder disease when they first walked through my door if this latest data holds fast it further affirms why we need to try our best to be vigilant about healing our bodies especially considered considering how many lady parts are in trouble and so here are some stats that i found alarming but important over 20 million women suffer from polycystic ovary syndrome fibroids endometriosis painful difficult heavy periods and thyroid and adrenal issues i didn't know this but your period's not supposed to be heavy and difficult uh, mm -hmm. i was just used to it so i figured that's what i got and um that's not the case guys more specifically one in nine women suffers from pcos fibroids occur in three out of every 10 women over the age of 35 though women in their 20s can have them too about one in 10 or over 8 million women women in the u.s uh, in the u.s have endometriosis mm. 176 million globally again these are all preventable problems 13 million americans have underactive thyroid function only half of women who have been correctly diagnosed women are five times more likely than men to be diagnosed with hyperthyroidism one in eight couples is infertile Fi uh, fibrocystic breasts ha affect 20 to 40 percent of menstruating women what's fucking crazy an estimated 7 million women meet the diagnostic criteria for clinical depression i mean that's i blame that on men but i guess it's other faults too every 10 minutes 12 hysterectomies are performed in the united states that's 600,000 every year crazy yes this assumption that most women don't know about or talk about this stuff scary the fact that there are no natural solutions in place to help us recover unacceptable that's the very reason why i earlier referred to these hormonal issues as castaway conditions mm. there's only so much that western medicine has to offer besides extreme interventions such as surgery when in great distress when your situation is less extreme you might find yourself uh, leaving visit after visit feeling hopeless and discouraged but with each all uh, with all of these advances in functional medicine today there's so much each of us can be doing that we no longer need to feel cast away um and that's all i'm going to read today but um this book she uh, a, a lot uh, dr Alyssa vidi is um uh, the founder of this thing called Flow Living. It's her business. But, but if you buy this book, I really highly recommend it because it gives you a lot of information on how to basically treat your body like a science exper experiment. And um, I have found my skin has not broken out since I've figured out this diet thing. And it is like, it is so much less severe. And it is really cool to see. Um, it's like when you were a kid and you took a seed home in a bag with a wet paper towel and then you watched it grow. Mm. Like that's what I'm doing, but with my face. What did you change? Um, so I drink water. I drink eight ounces of water immediately upon waking. Right. Um, I have no processed, hardly any processed foods. Mm -hmm. um, really, I used to eat like a lot of waffles. My my night eating has stopped um, and I don't eat past 8 p.m. I do sometimes get up in the middle of the night and eat, but I only have healthy stuff in my house now. So that's so um, early for someone who does comedy, though, to stop eating at eight. Yeah. 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 I mean, sometimes I can't, but um, I yeah. do what I can. But I've just I've made a lot of drastic changes and I cook every single meal now mm. instead of ordering. Yeah. I mean, because it saves so much money. Yeah. 
yeah yeah delivery in new york is so abusive but um yeah yeah so uh this book is like having like a personal session with her and um it's really been beneficial so i highly recommend it if you're having any of the symptoms that i just described in that excerpt and then i was saying on the uh pathway of uh good news for women i was just scrolling through instagram when i was like doing my shows on saturday night and i follow this account called birth uprising i don't even know why i have no interest in giving birth i just you know i just like women's issues and it said did you know pelvic exams are performed on anesthetized unconsenting women every day and it's legal in order for medical students to gain experience performing vaginal exams they are told to perform them on women while they are under anesthesia what for surgeries or invasive procedures yes uh these surgeries uh the surgeries these women are often having have nothing to do with their reproductive organs you- they could be having an unrelated stomach surgery and still be given a pelvic exam in many states there is not a specific law requiring consent be obtained prior to these exams the what? following slides are screenshots of an article covering the commonality of this practice um and so you know if you want to go to birth uprising you can look at that article that's really bad. but i was like i just need to make sure this was true so i basically posted it on my instagram story and i was like i'm just putting this here so i don't forget but i have to look into it myself but it's 100 percent true Um, oh my god and i found some articles there's a new york times article from maybe like 2020 or 2019 that you can read about it about a woman who got a pelvic exam um you know it's basically medical rape as my friend i was gonna say that's rape you're putting your you're putting tools or your fingers inside of a woman's vagina yeah and i mean she's under anesthesia oh wow that's bad yeah in 2019 there was only one two three how do you live with your there was only five states that even had um uh that had banned uh sorry six because hawaii there was only uh six states that had banned unauthorized pelvic exams uh as of january 2019 um it's changed a little bit as of may 19th 2022 there is a map uh of of places that there was at least um uh some legislation uh introduced or you know something like that but there's still a ton of states where this is absolutely uh fucking how do you know if you got a pelvic you don't know legal um yeah well i mean i think i I don't know what, what you can do to regulate but it's just something to be aware of um and something that if you uh, want to contact your local representative, it's a I think it's an important bill to be introduced. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, listen, I know week after week, it's just another thing to add to uh, women's uh, stress and the things yeah. that we need to do to protect ourselves. Uh-huh. But well, um, just longer. you know, this is like one of those things where it's like shocking that this is not talked about every fucking day, but it is absolutely uh, true. And there are are a ton of states that have absolutely no legislation uh, about that That so wild that is wild that a group Mm -hmm. of medical professionals could fucking live with themselves after giving a passed out woman a pelvic exam Mm -hmm. that is crazy Mm -hmm. i mean it just goes along with uh society using our bodies as mere vessels and not actually uh you know governing us like we are adult people who can think for ourselves that would be nice wouldn't you can you imagine that uh but you know what's great and not shitty and fucked up our guests Hmm. uh we had a great conversation with this person (laughs) weird noise mike uh (laughs) okay uh i wanted to have her on for so long i think she's so fucking rad she was a she's a former porn star she's a current dj she was recently on the road with burt kreischer and his fully loaded tour uh spinning uh, on that stadium tour so excited to have her on the show ladies and gentlemen please give a warm welcome to carter (laughs) cruz We are here with Carter Cruz. So excited to have you on. So this excited is your to be here. shirt, and I fucking love it. <laughs> I'm so it excited says, that you're wearing it. Yeah, it says dirt bag. I love merch that's like unique and not just a shirt, right. like a t-shirt, you know, with like this is my joke on it. Um, <laughs> but one of the things, um, so Corinne and I were talking about how we get like criticized like every fucking little thing we do, and it's really annoying. But um, you are not in porn anymore. Right, right. You <laughs> no, were no, no, no. right. How long ago? We did a have? quick search for I thought you research. Said you're not important anymore. <laughs> no. I was like, yeah. I mean, Don't probably not. Shit about you, right? <laughs> wow, my life on the D list. Wow, okay, like I gotta some, talk slower. That's some deep, like you know, some insecurities coming out right there. That's so <laughs> you're funny. not important anymore. Slip. It does sound very similar, though. You're not like it does sound similar. <laughs> but you left porn. Oh, how long ago? It's uh, it's been about six years, I guess. Six years. Okay. Yeah. Did you or do you get? criticized for how you fuck 
uh, in porn or yeah. like in real life? I mean, either is interesting. Well, yeah, <laughs> in, in real no, life, would, in real life, would be quite rude. Yeah, 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 yeah. that would be really rude. Yeah, uh, no, no, I don't think so. Okay, good. That's good because I, I, I swear think to God, that's one thing someone... I think I feel pretty good about. Like, yeah. I have a dom pot. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to an interview that you did. I forget what podcast is on. Otherwise, I would shout them out. It was a good interview um, about you doing research before you got into porn. Mm-hmm. And you were saying that these porn stars had like lives that you like really liked. You mentioned Sasha Gray. Like what mm. about their lifestyle? I love Sasha Gray. What about the lifestyle or about it was enticing to you and did it meet your expectations? Uh, you know, I think it's about like freedom. That's always been kind of yeah. like the thing that I really like aspire to have. And, you know, growing up, I was a really competitive dancer um, from a young age. And, you know, I was kind of the golden child. My sister was the rebellious one, which is kind of funny because I was actually the bad kid but like you know I was the one who said yes ma'am no ma'am yes I'll clean my room because I wanted to go out with my friends my sister doesn't give a shit so she's like yeah fuck you mom like I'm not cleaning my room I don't need to go out to the party but I'm like if I don't go to this party like my life is over right Uh, so I would clean my room so you know I was kind of always this golden child and so there was you know this freedom that came with wow I can never do anything that everyone expected me to do anymore (laughs) that sounds incredible you're free right it's terrifying but at the same time so I guess it did meet my expectations Uh I mean even the other night um (laughs) we were at a performing at I'm on the Burt Kreischer tour and we were in Dayton and I actually wasn't allowed to perform um the the venue had a little meeting (laughs) about me (laughs) Wait, are you serious let's go let's go what happened <laughs> i wish i could have been a fly on the wall Me too. um bird's team was so apologetic they sent the nicest email saying you know we're still gonna pay you like we are so sorry this happened and bird said listen carter i love you i will always have your back just not when it cost me five hundred thousand yeah, dollars. <laughs> so there is yeah. a price tag on it. I'm right, like, that's right, fair. Right. That's fair. Like, <laughs> what did they say? Um, oh, I just said I wasn't family friendly, which is hilarious because you've you've heard any of those comedians like I'm the most family friendly actor. Well, that's family- what I was. I was. I was like, are you doing something different? I was like, are you sticking a bottle up your ass on no, stage? No. Like, what is? I'm this? literally just DJing. Uh, You're playing great. music and going like, let's have a good time tonight, guys. <laughs> like, it was just an excuse to have someone who was in um, the adult entertainment industry not perform. Form. Right, right. Yes. Wow. Well, because I was going to say, that's when, crazy. Wow. When I heard you talk about that in the interview of like the lifestyle, I'm like, man, everything I know from like Stoya and stuff and just like like the darker side of porn of like getting your fucking bank account shut down and just getting like shit on by society. Like guys wanting to fuck you or masturbate <laughs> to you and then going, you can't perform in my right. Ohio stadium. <laughs> fuck you. And you, like, that's what that is. You seem to be like taking it okay because I'm like, I feel like I would be pissed, but maybe you're, it's just not worth your energy anymore or oh, I started like my manager called me and told me and I started cracking up laughing right okay and then he read me the email from Bird's team which was so 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 nice yeah and they were like this is terrible like we support you this doesn't reflect any of our views like very very welcoming and I was like hey it's cool you know it's happened before mm, really um, but and uh, I think everyone else on the tour was way more upset about it than I was like they're all like this is bullshit because they know <laughs> right. that they're filthier than you like <laughs> they are well, like vile never, human beings and they've never had to live with it it's like when you've been you know kind of living with that stigma for like 10 years you just like you're like roll with the punches and the fact that you know you have a group of people that are supporting you and saying we don't agree with this yeah but i guess the point of that is that having those things taken away from you like there are places that i could never perform no matter what i do it's been six seven years since i did you know porn all Mm -hmm. i'm doing is playing music yeah and yet it's like once a whore always a whore right and so (sighs) while that's a terrifying thing there is this kind of sense of freedom in it where like you never have to live up to anyone's expectations because you just took the bar from here and you put it down here and now now everything i do is like my parents are like oh thank god like you know she's not on drugs (laughs) this is fantastic you know what I do think about that, that a lot. I was like, I should have been a lot worse of a kid. And then everyone's expectations would be so much lower. Right. Yeah, that's like a that really way. smart tactic. It's like <laughs> when you get naked. Yeah. That's like, yeah. It's like when you work at a job, you should be the worst employee ever because then everyone will just be like, oh, just give them an easy No job. expectations. Yeah. Just <laughs> make them file something. Yeah. No that's stress. so smart. You're a genius. Was there a reaction from your parents when like there was this kind of, I guess, role reversal, you could say, if your sister was like yeah. the fuck you mom and dad and you were like, okay, sorry, mom 
and dad? Like when, like, did you tell, did you have to tell them you were going into porn? I did. And they actually told me, don't tell your sister. Um, Cause she's going to do it. <laughs> Cause she's going to be pissed. Cause me and my sister, you know, growing up, there was a lot of animosity. Cause you know, I was, oh, okay. you know, the older kid, I was like, very outgoing she was much more just introverted and and she's not really like that we're talking about like kid stuff you yeah, know yeah, yeah. she wanted to be on the computer she's a big reader not like didn't have a lot of friends wasn't super into any activities she didn't like any <laughs> kind of team stuff you know she's very really i like my sister bedroom. is amazing <laughs> she's an amazing woman but i like I, that you said she doesn't like any activities yeah yeah I know. that's she's, possibly my best and favorite explanation of a person ever <laughs> <laughs> my parents put her in dance with me in there. She just she would bring Barbies like in her leotard. Oh, and then she would go in the bathroom and like play with dolls. That's like, fun. Like, like, fuck this. Like, we know what you're doing like in there, <laughs> right? That sounds great. But it was actually made our. So you know, my parents were like, "Don't tell her. Like, she's gonna be so mad because she's just gonna be like, we've always just had, you know, gotten along well." As long as it's for like 12 hours, once we go past that, yeah. it turns into... Sure. But I think so. I finally had to tell her because she's hitting me up like, oh, what are you doing in Florida? You know? <laughs> and I was like, I'm, I'm just going to tell her. We were having a good sister moment. I'm like, let me... <laughs> and she was like, that is so cool. She actually respected it a lot. And I think it made our relationship better. Oh, great. Because then she really did be get to become like, she's married now. Nice. You know, like, she, like <laughs> nice. she's like a real well, she's person. she's done it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if she's going to have kids. So I don't know if she's fully fulfilling my parents like you know right. like need for that but yeah. she's definitely she gets to be the good kid now and I get to be like you know the kind of the black sheep of the family and I think that's kind of what I always wanted to be and that's <laughs> what she always was and she didn't want to be that and perfect. Oh. kind of like you know it's kind of you traded platters you're yeah. like here you go you take this hat I'm gonna yeah, take yeah. this hat. yeah that's <laughs> like, really cool she like lived, my parents went and like lived near her like in college um, <laughs> before they moved to Costa Rica and they were like oh we're just gonna we have a year we sold the house we're not ready to move out of the country yet you know, so they wanted to come live where she was in college, and they lived down the street from her, and she loved that. Wow. She would go over there every day. You know, wow. and I love my parents. They are wonderful human beings. I wow. love them so much. But let me tell you, I did not want my parents no. living down the street from me in college. Yeah. yeah, I would fucking hate that. Well, I don't. That's yeah. crazy. Um, <laughs> your parents sound like they have a really good relationship, and they're like, don't overreact, and they're like, in, in control of their emotions and stuff. Yeah, they're chill. Wow. They're very chill. Like, what does wow, the conversation awesome. look like when you tell your parents you're doing porn? Because most people can't even, like, have <laughs> yeah, a sex conversation. Conversation with their parents. I didn't have a sex conversation. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell my mom about this. She found out about the guys we fuck podcast, and she was like, "I have never in my life." You didn't tell your mom about the podcast. No, because I was scared of a reaction. My mom left. I was being a bitch. But um, yeah. (laughs) Well, I guess I just my agent, my first agent in the business, was like, "You're gonna have to tell your parents. Like, they're going Mm. to find out. So it's just whether you want it to come from you or someone else, or like a family friend." Which was yeah, I was. I really respect that he like. I mean, I was planning to anyway. I mean. I knew yeah. it wasn't going to be a secret, but... How'd you say it? Like, what'd you say? Well, I called them because, you know, I was in college at the time and it's okay, like, hey, I gotta talk to you guys about something. I kind of said, like, you know... Because my whole plan was always go to law school. And I was like, well, if this doesn't work <laughs> out, that, I could work in mm-hmm. law in the adult business. Because, you know, and like no one will be like stigmatizing there. So yeah, I'm like, you pass the bar. No one gives a shit. Right, yeah. right. Exactly. <laughs> so I was like, you know, there's like, it, I was like, let me just, I need to do this, you know? Yeah. Um, but my dad's first thing was, you know, because it was a little conference call with my parents. My dad's like, uh, oh, well, like, you know, does this mean like, you know, you're going to, you're going to start doing drugs? I'm like, dad, <laughs> I've been doing drugs. <laughs> That's what you're worried about, dad? No, that was literally the old, the first thing that came into his head. It, like My dad's like, he's kind of a he's super smart like computer guy. Very big feminist. Always oh, raised us, you know, you can do anything a man can do. You know, you don't need. So, you know, he, he has a... He's a pretty good outlook on that. Wow. Stuff. Wow. So your your like spirit was nurtured by your parents. Yeah, I think so. And your individuality was encouraged. Yes. And whatever you much. wanted to do, they're like, okay, just be safe or whatever. Except for learning how to drum. My dad, that, my parents nixed that one. That was the only thing. Was that because one? you had like, they sh- they saw like no musical talent in you? Or no, no. Really every other <laughs> instrument. Like I, I took so many Oh, instruments. they just didn't want to listen to that. Yeah, my mom didn't oh, want to hear the drums. That's, that's fair. Yeah, and yeah, I think yeah. this was before. Now they got <laughs> those like the quiet fuck. ones. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's a lot. For listening to a kid practice an instrument as someone who practiced the violin poorly a lot, it's rough. <laughs> it is really 
Sarah? It's, uh, it's it, that's they don't they don't deserve that if they treat you nicely. No, 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 no. I, I don't blame them for it yeah. at all. I'm like, okay, that's, that was the one thing they said. No, no drums. That's so funny. That's, that's so funny. <laughs> We'd actually ever uh, rather have you raw dog a colleague. Yeah. So. <laughs> well, I like I love to blame them. You know, I love to give them shit and say, yeah. oh, I turned out the way I did because of you guys. Uh, just you know, I wanted to major in acting in a uh, college, right? Yeah. And my dad was like, you know, they were super supportive of everything growing up. And then, you know, I feel like when I got to college, my dad's like, okay, you know, I feel like I've supported everything you've wanted to do. It's kind of time to think about real shit, you know, like get a real job and like major in business. And so I always like love to tell him, I'm like, dad, if you just let me major in acting, like I wouldn't have had to do porn. But I just... <laughs> Sorry, maybe uh, I blame them for all types of shit, but not really. Just, yeah, you have a fun relationship just, with your parents. Yeah. Sounds. How, oh, cool. how do you get a porn agent? Like, what's the process like? Because I only know stuff like getting a porn agent from like weird HBO documentaries where you <laughs> go into a bed and fuck the director. But I wanted to know if that was really. I mean, I'm sure someone's d- done that. Yeah. Oh yeah, like the casting couch stuff. Yeah. I mean, it was like it was literal real. bed, and everyone was in there, this and wasn't a futon. I, yeah, and I was like <laughs> watching, and I was like, what? What is is this you know because i mean i'm sure i was like between 12 and 16 watching this but uh you know when you when your parents have hbo growing up the world is your oyster yeah, so yeah. <laughs> so yeah so what was the process like getting an agent and like did, did any weird shit go down um well actually i just kind of searched it you know i just looked at googled, like, it? googled it yeah it's this, <laughs> this amazing tool that you know some people don't know how to use but people always actually wrote this article like years ago because i was just getting messages every Every day from guys going, how do you get into porn? How do you get into porn? And I was so annoyed with getting this question. Yeah, wow. that I just wrote a blog, and so anytime anyone would ask mm. me the question, I just send them the link. Yeah, and it's a very like just kind of assholey thing, but it's like okay, first of all, like just Look figure, it yeah, figure it out. Yeah, there's, so there was like, no like, it, yeah, there was no weird process, no like fucking any. You have to dudes. fuck your agent. Yeah, no, no nice. God, no, that's God, great. God, that's no, yeah, that's a yeah, that's a red flag. I'm sure that's like happened. Actually, there was like a guy down in Florida that was repping a bunch of girls. I don't know if you guys know the um what was that hot girls wanted yeah yeah, yeah. the the that. agent in that um so i was actually me and my friend were supposed to be the stars of that oh shit and then they decided i'll tell you why because they decided we'd been in the business too long which meant that we were already on a successful trajectory oh so they, and they did somebody. not want that, that was not the yeah. story they wanted they to wanted tell. A, i yeah. hope i make it one if day. they had made it about us it would have been such a different documentary but yeah everyone would have wanted, wanted to get into porn yeah that's wow. not, they wanted to basically i'm so really good friends with one of the girls um that was because we used to come out to la together and stay in hotels and she's out of the business now but you know that documentary like really fucked her up because uh, really right Being a part of it did right well oh, okay. you know they kind of used you know she was super young she was 18 years old yeah came straight Little from baby. like farmland usa and you know they put her and i don't want to tell her story too much because i think that honestly you guys should have her on she yeah would be i think i know who you're fantastic. talking about because i followed a lot of the women from that documentary after i watched it yeah yeah they basically you know just kind of used her to make this whole industry look bad and while she did have bad experiences in the industry you know i don't know if it was it was also compounded by this documentary sure yeah, which the then angle. right which then everyone in the industry watches and they're like oh this is and then she was kind of in this bad situation where they said well you know you come on the tour with us and promote the documentary and kind of like buy into this thing that we're trying to sell this narrative that we're trying to yeah, sell being sure. and we'll, fawn in front of we'll pay for, for your school to go to photography school and all this stuff and none of that really materialized so, so she was really used wow. twice over and the documentarian set out to prove that she was getting used in porn while using her to prove their angle in yeah. the documentary it's a real and it's the, women, yes. a woman made that right it was Rashida, Rashida Jones, Jones. Yeah. what the fuck Rashida she hates porn well that was my that was one of the questions <laughs> I had for you today was about um it's very common for especially women who aren't involved in the industry at all to advocate against it and that's something yeah. that we've definitely spent a long time thinking about because it's hard for me to speak with intelligence about a something an industry that i'm not a part of so that's why we have people who are come on and tell their own stories and some have had positive experiences and some have had negative experiences but like yeah what's your thoughts on people advocating so heavily against it who have never been involved in it well i think that it's very dangerous because you're speaking for people that you know you have no shared experiences with yeah but even people who you know and i've spoken pretty openly about this like with mia khalifa someone who was in the industry Mm -hmm. um and is 
speaks out against it very openly. But the problem I have with that is like, you're allowed to tell your truth. Yeah. But when you are basically put into a spotlight, when you go, porn fucked me up, mainstream loves that they love that story because that's what they and want so they're gonna bring that in and it really helps help people succeed by turning their back and going like this is a bad industry i was treated badly this is terrible this is all bad but they're re- not realizing that the only reason their story is being amplified over all the people who enjoyed their experiences is because it fits into this stigmatizing like you know narrative that we have yeah so, Everybody's got an angle, and it's like right. I don't want to hear your story unless it fits with my angle. And it's like that's something that America, America specifically, needs to fucking get over. Yeah, <laughs> like every people have good and bad experiences in every single industry, and they right. both need to be talked about. My God, I don't want to speak for everybody else. I think it's important that we lift up other people's voices. Yeah, and I think you have to have that responsibility if you're going to be given that big of a platform. Yeah, you know? because the yeah, a lot of media loves this oh poor girl narrative. Yes. Oh oh, she got so dicked over, and it's like there women are getting dicked over in various ways to various degrees by various types of people but um yeah that whole ex- like la 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 i just want to hear about how you struggle that's it like right right, that's, right, that's right. fucking it up oh. damn oh, sorry you i thought know. i did yeah. <laughs> how was your experience in porn overall good good i mean i had a you know i had a one really bad situation when i was a contract girl what, um, do you mind talking about it? Oh yeah, I can talk about it. I mean, I've like technically like signed a like NDA, but like fuck it. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. I know Chad might ask this, but we'll see. We just won't say anyone's uh, anyone's name. Okay. Uh, and yeah, also just say too, allegedly I, I, a bunch well, of times. I also don't think that uh, like um, now California is not really upholding that stuff anymore. Good. It NDAs are kind of fucked. Well, they make if they make you sign an NDA that says, "Hey, we'll pay you the money we owe you, but only if you promise not to tell people how bad we treated sure. you and that we didn't pay you for three years." I don't think that since the wine scene stuff, it doesn't really go over well so yeah, yeah. you know you to get it's yeah. not <laughs> there's a lot of problems with like sexual assault and like just mistreatment in general of women and ndas and, right. and people people but you know we concentrate on women on this show right so. yeah. and in ever and in every industry but um, yeah yeah no i just had one i was a contract girl for a year it was my kind of my one of my last years in porn i really was thought it was going to be my last year but i ended up shooting for another year after because i never got paid i oh fuck you know and i basically was I couldn't work for anybody else. Um, oh. So when you so say contract I was girl, me, I spent every dime that I'd saved in yeah. the business oh, fuck. just trying to live and pay my bills. Um, so when that was, you know, over, I was like, well, I guess I got to start shooting hardcore again because like, I don't have any money. <laughs> Get your ass already. Ugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so annoying. I was like very over it by Damn. then too. So it was like, uh. oh man. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get wet for that? Like, you really got to be good at compartmentalizing, right? Yes, I am very good at compartmentalizing. <laughs> Hard to fuck when you have senioritis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Yeah, no, I think I think that's a that's a big part of the adult industry, or really, like, honestly, even performing. I mean, you guys are comedians. It's yeah. the same thing. And it's been interesting being on this tour and, like, hearing the guys talk about, you know, the things they deal with. And I feel like comedians, porn stars, DJs, those three very different industries have so much overlap in a lot of ways. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. We're all a little misfit toys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like the long travel, like being alone, kind of feeling like by yourself, like doing these like, you know, tours where you're staying in a hotel room night after night, you get these big laughs and then you go back to your hotel yeah, room and like, you just sit alone. Cause all of a snookers in bed. <laughs> High highs and yeah. low lows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how do you go to sleep after that? <laughs> Everyone was just cheering for me. Yeah. God damn. <laughs> Yeah, I usually don't go to sleep after that. It's so. hard. Yeah. It's hard to. <laughs> That's what weed's for. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, before you tell us, can you explain like, when you say you specify contract girl, what's the, as opposed to what, like for people who aren't familiar? Well, back in the day, you know, contract girls used to be like the big thing, like Vivid Girls, okay, mm, okay, Digital Playground, and that's like when you only had to shoot like one movie a month and you got paid really well because you're only with that company. Oh, right? okay, but exclusivity, now, right? Exclusivity, for. but now you know there's very few of that because there's so much content. It's more about the more you do, the better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Ugh. people aren't really doing contracts anymore, but it was perfect for me because it was right when I was trying to transition into, you know, DJing. Yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm starting to have gigs. So I didn't want to be working all the time. I wanted to have time off. Time to, I wanted yeah. to, you know, work on my, make mixes, work on music, yeah, do all this stuff. Yeah, gear, learn the gear, all that shit. Right. Yeah. So I thought, you know, oh, signing this contract would be, you know, a, an amazing thing because I only had to shoot two days a month. Oh, wow. But it was, nice. would basically cover all my bills. It wasn't a ton of money, but, you know, I was like, was oh, enough. this will, I'll, 
I can live comfortably off this, and then I have that's two days a month. The rest of the time, I can fully focus on this new career. And unfortunately, that's not what ended up happening because I never got the money. So you know, I was just like constantly just like freaking out and yeah. not being able to actually focus on pursuing something else. Right, you know, right, or at least not a hundred percent. Yes. Yeah. Was your agent? I mean, and because usually, like with business stuff, like that's where the agent like fucking knocks down that guy's door. But was he not able to? Get- I think he knew I was on my way out, and he this person that I was contracted with is very, very big name in the industry. Like, I mean, if you do a scene for him, like you, you get nominated for an award, you know? So Mm. he is big and winning a lot of awards with big companies and, um, has a very strong fan base. So I think, you know, unfortunately with my agent and this was, I, I, you know, he was always good to me besides this. And I, I will say, I didn't really tell him what was going on until it got really bad. Um, you know, cause I was, I was kind of doing my own thing at this point. I didn't really need him since I was contracted. So we weren't really communicating. And, you know, I kind of like, I can put up with a lot. I have a very high tolerance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're fresh. Yeah. yeah. So I can go a really long time, but then once you cross it, it's like, oh, no, 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 like we're done. Yeah. And so I kind of went to him at that point. But by then it had escalated so far that he was like, you know, you should have come to me three months ago and we could have worked this out. But I think at this point he was realizing that if he like went to bat for me with this guy that would ruin his relationship, his clients, hurt yeah. his other clients, yeah, yeah. and that I wasn't really going to be making him that much more yeah, money for right. very long. Yeah, and honestly, business, business decision is business, and I so you know. Did I feel somewhat hurt by that and a little bit betrayed? But yeah. at the same time, I also can understand it. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it wasn't, um, you know, it, it was not getting paid, but it wasn't like, uh, honestly, this guy, like, I really liked him. He's kind of a dick. Everyone thinks he's a dick in the whole industry. Sure. So, you know, like, yeah, everyone hates him. I actually kind of thought he was hilarious. <laughs> he's a, Sometimes I like people that everyone right. hates because I'm like, ah, he just hates himself. It's fine. Right. You know, he's funny as shit. Like, I don't know, but he's definitely a very, like, sadistic person. Like, he mm-hmm. loves to... Um, just put people into like the worst situations and just see what they can basically handle. Oh. You know, like he likes to. That sounds good when you're directing 20, porn. 23 hour days, I think. You know, like that was. So he the, loves cocaine, huh? Yeah, I know. <laughs> Actually, you know, because you know, he goes and he just is chilling. How, he doesn't, he's not interested in the sex at all. Um, his movies are much more about the, the story oh. and everything. Oh. Yeah, it's, <laughs> so that's why I thought it was going to be cool, you know? Yeah, because he um, cared, But yeah. he doesn't give a shit about the porn. He is like, like kind of asexual in that sense like wow. he's like so he's not like creepy oh, so he's, yeah i would feel more comfortable with that guy yeah in but, that sense but you know we'd be like oh you're gonna do a scene at this like gross ass like strip club and there's like nails coming out of the stage and i'm like this seems unsafe you right. know or like they were a condom only company but they wouldn't get like the right size condoms for the guy and so there's all these problems and you know so it was just like re- and then these crazy 20 23 hour days that you're just doing multiple scenes like not being fed the whole time how do you fuck when you're starving <laughs> I, you can't fuck when you're and starving. I put up with all of it with this I was like always like smile on my face <laughs> chilling until I didn't get my check yeah then I was like okay okay I feel like I've done way more than right like, yeah this yeah because the whole time you're probably like this is just to pay my bills this is just to pay my bills right. and then when your bills don't get paid you're right. like what is this for <laughs> Fuck you. That was where I drew the line. So, yeah. Do you remember the moment uh, porn stopped being fun for you? I think it was probably like during that con. I mean, so I dated this guy um, before that contract. Kind okay. of the reason why I signed it. I'm an ex, not someone I'm dating now. Um, and he was uh, totally crazy. Actually, it's how I f- knew about you guys. Oh, he, uh, <laughs> he's, he's the one who sent me your podcast. Uh-oh. So, so like the only good thing that came out of nice. that relationship. That's um, great. And he made me get a credit card to build my credit. So oh, that's he's, good. <laughs> two good things. He's wow. ten years ten years older. He's like, you don't credit. I'm like, I'm 22 now. <laughs> <laughs> What's credit? Uh. But uh, he was married the whole time we were dating. I didn't See? know. Oh, fuck. I didn't know. Obviously. How'd you find out? Actually, years after we broke up. Up, Are you serious? His ex-wife, now ex-wife, uh, DMs me. I was in Japan, <laughs> drunk. And she's like, I got a DM from an I thought she was just the crazy ex because he told me they were divorced. So I always mm. hated this woman, right? Well, I'm she's like, crazy she's crazy him. She's calling him crying all the time. Well, it's because they were going to therapy and he would start a fight with her to go hang out with me. Oh. I had no idea. Oh, what a dick. Isn't that crazy? God So damn, I hated what a dick. this woman. I was like, this, wow. I was like, this, and she was, oh man. She she was being so fucking screwed over. So she yeah. messaged me and said, hey, 
I I know about this stuff. I, you know, we're getting divorced, and I just like I'm trying to put a timeline for her sanity. I think yeah, to yeah. understand like all the things because there was a lot with him. Yeah, <laughs> he had multiple girlfriends. It was Jesus. It was, He's the Tindler swindler, but for pussy. Yeah, he yeah. was. So you know, she but she messaged me, and it was really great because she and I got to like kind of this whole talk, and she and I we always support each other now. Yeah, uh, like, you can shit talk. And the other girlfriend, there was the wife, and then the two serious girlfriends, and we're all cool now. But <laughs> whoa, yeah, <so. laughs> what was great about him? What did you like about him? Um, I God, I don't even want to say this because then it's like I don't want him to hear it. I'm well, and then we can talk about the all sex the terrible things. Okay, yeah, I, mean, I was going to say he was must great. have be yeah, good in bed. He's a you know he's he's a writer. I think he's a he's really good with words. Okay, he's very, and I, see, I was yeah. young. I mean, I was ten years younger than him, and yeah, you know yeah. he had or he seemed like he had money. You know, and he <laughs> you know he, I mean, he didn't though. Well I, well, I found out that he was like spending like his wife savings and stuff, like mm, buying me first class and buying me Louboutin. Oh. My yeah. Christ! I told her I was like, "Girl, I never wear those." Like, should we like sell those? Like, you can. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's doing good, so it's not wow. an issue. But I hate him. But yeah, so yeah, he was terrible. But he made me feel very, very bad about doing porn. We met at the height of my career, and I told him on our first date, I was like, "Hey, like, I don't want a boyfriend. So, like, I'm." doing a lot of porn and I'm doing really hardcore <laughs> stuff. doing a lot. Too much porn to have a boyfriend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, how much is too much? I was much working too almost much every porn? day. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's you know? too much porn to have a boyfriend. I was working almost every day and, you know, I'm doing gangbangs. I'm doing all... And I'm like, I know nice. that this is going to be a problem. Yeah. Like you, and he was like, no, no, I'm no cool. No matter how cool they say. Said, no, they always I'm say cool. they're cool. Yeah, yeah. He said, no, no, I'm cool. You know, it's like, I think it's so dope. And yeah, seemed like he was really supportive. And I was just like, uh, you know, and I don't know. Yeah, like I really said day one. I was like, let's just like go on dates and like fuck and like not be yeah. boyfriend and girlfriend. Like I would have been happy with that. Yeah. But he like needed to possess, you know, he's that kind of guy. Yeah. He, yeah. Possess needed, multiple women. He wanted me to be his, yeah. you know? Also, he was projecting. He's like, I don't want you to do this in quotes, bad thing. Well, I'm doing like an actually ethically fucked up thing and actually yeah. hurting someone yeah. in yeah. the process Mul multiple people. Yeah. oh he would cry to me he would cry that's I, my porn what oh. the <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't get off his. <laughs> Wait, tell us about how he cried. Wait, it's Dude. good when men cry, but not when they're being manipulated and lying. <laughs> oh, no, Just no. want to say that if you're a man who cries, yay. Oh, yeah, we love crying. Yeah. No like, manipulation. Yes. No, like real tears of like feeling real emotion. Yeah, that being is, vulnerable. Like, that is a very like awesome thing. Yeah. Like, no, crying because you're going, oh, my God, it hurts me so much that like you went to work today and got paid while like he was like in therapy with his wife. Like, I feel like ah, that's not really like. He's a piece of shit. Hey, he's a piece of God. shit. Wonder what, he's, what is he doing now? Being uh, a piece of shit, probably. But dude, honestly, jumping on a bunch of podcasts, telling everyone now that he's a um, expert in um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, what uh, polygamy or not polygamy? What polyamory? Polyamory. polyamory. Are you serious? You know what? And he said he we we really try to be open minded on this show, but every week something every comes time. up that's about polyamory and it really awful. rubs me the wrong it's way. It's bad. The polyamorous community really hates me. There's like a lot of uh, <laughs> there's a lot of messages. For, How about for take care of your I, own? I wrote in our book about it. <laughs> so on like these nerdy book review sites, everyone's like, uh, "This girl doesn't understand polyamory." I'm like, "Shut up!" <laughs> Shut but I think up. I think you're, I mean, he, of course, he is so the opposite of that. How do you like oh my God. when a guy? And I've I guess I've been watching a lot of documentaries about horrible men lately. <laughs> horrible there's men. Been a lot. That's the summer women, vibe. Yeah. Women to wire money. To them <laughs> multiple women like ooh, broke girl summer is what it, i'm watching unfold but like and they're being their fucking tears are being weaponized about like but i'm hurting while they're actively hurting multiple right. people over multiple things over money over sex over making you feel bad about the fucking career that you chose that he right. already said he was fine with mm. while he's cheating on la, 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 la. like there's well, are those men just gonna die not getting it I, oh, yeah. I, I'm just I, I really can't stop thinking about this like what is their fate I think they uh, yeah uh, by the time probably they're getting married. like 35 <laughs> yeah. again probably someone getting married to someone bitch. who has to listen to this show well not a dumb bitch because the thing is the thing is we say we call like we say like don't be a dumb bitch you know in, in a loving way but like the, I watched the documentary Bad Vegan on Netflix have you guys seen that I, 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 I was emotionally getting myself ready because I heard enough feedback on it and I was like got I gotta take a break Break after the yeah. Johnny Depp Amber yeah. Heard trial you should, you should. to emotionally recover. Yeah. <laughs> but the 
very smart, very outgoing, very career oriented, very goal setting and goal getting women. Gorgeous, brilliant, bright women are getting manipulated by these fucking fat schmucks. No, they. But I think they really like to go for every time I've, I've dated two kind of psycho men. Mm-hmm. Um, I they generally have very good taste. They're all yeah. most of my exes, amazing people. Love that's them. That's awesome. That's good. But I have two, you know, totally crazy people. <sighs> um, but they were both every girl that they've been with. I'm friends with all of them. I feel like we all like all connected the girls. after. Yeah, all the girls. <laughs> I like your your post relationship support group. Oh yes. yeah, I know. <laughs> we're like, yeah, that was because I feel like we need to validate each other and be like, oh yeah, that was good. Crazy. Yeah, but it's just like it's saying how much most... you earn. Like you know, like he was he did this right. to me. He did this to me. Like oh, that was fucked up. Okay, cool. Like that's right. that's important. And to compare and be like, oh, he said that shit to you too. Mm, like you yes. know, you start to see. But I think having you know the where was I going with this? <laughs> well, the, uh, the support group. Sorry, I interrupted. Um, oh, it's fine. It was, uh, bad vegan. Two uh, boyfriends who were psychopaths. Oh, you, were you only dated two that sucked. Yeah, and you were friends oh, with but, all the oh, women. Oh, but all the girls, like all the women. Sorry, I should call them women, not mm. girls. I mean, at one point we were barely like eighteen, so mm. I was we were girls. girls but Legally, yeah, the women. You know, I feel like they they love to go for the most strong minded you know independent women and it's always so interesting to me because you think that like but they could prey on the dumb bitches right right mm-hmm. all day long and that would be easy for them and i think it's like this challenge and so mm-hmm. anytime i've been in a relationship yeah. with like one of these guys like all the women that i end up meeting through them that i've had the same experience are usually like they're like i've never let a guy treat me like that before you know like right you know it's like yeah. it's not like they're constantly in this you know right. cycle it's right. like this one person and it's like i think that they like it makes they get off on that that like they they, you're it not the girl that's easy to manipulate and so that's why it's and it's more entertaining and they zero in them. and kind of obsess over the girl mm-hmm. which it's like what are the woman like but it's like yeah and and that when faced with that type of attention you're you know you gotta ask, you're like this is charming yeah and it's just obvious obviously oh. because so many women fall for guys that are like that are like that and you usually know deep down too yeah, i think that's I the thing but i'm always like i mean like with my ex like I, the minute it was more uh pain than it was fun yeah i mm-hmm. pulled out yeah i was about to go on you know my first like bus tour with like these djs that i've been friends with like or that i've been a fan of for years you know and that's i actually awesome. met them through him oh, so he did kind of help stuff came out of it yeah he did like kind of help me get that you know but I was like, we were fighting all the time, you know, and I was like, never really seeing him. So we were like, it was, you know, he was in New York a bunch. So I wasn't really ever seeing him. And then I'm about to go on this tour. And I'm like, I'm like, fuck this 22, 23. I'm about to do one of the coolest things I've done in my life. Yeah. And I'm crying every day because this man is like treating me like shit. And I was like, I'm done. And of course, yeah. you know, he pulled the whole like, I can't believe you gave up on us. Oh, <sighs> for the love of And I was like, oh hey, God, get your shit time. together. I was like, go to therapy for like six months and like call me in six months. Like, yeah. I really thought at that point, like he was just like a broken person. I thought right. that like he had so many things like going on with him that I felt empathy, but I was like, I can't be in this. This isn't healthy for me. I have to go. But like you fix yourself. Like I still love you. Yeah. And and then after we broke up, that's when I started finding out all the shit, like the marriage stuff, all that. Uh, and I was like, oh, okay, no, no, no. Yeah, don't worry about it. Therapy ain't gonna fix that, baby. Like, yeah. <laughs> we should have merch that's a tiny violin to give them that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, and it's pink. It's I love pink. That. <laughs> it's this world's smallest violin. Oh my God. How. Uh, do you like I'm I <laughs> I don't know how to ask this question. Do you know how to orchestrate a gangbang that's not in the porn in a porn atmosphere? Oh, you mean like just like a natural Like gangbang? what if a gal wants a gangbang? Dude, sounds so, fun. I'm actually the worst person to ask about this. Okay. Because like so I like I always want to have threesomes with my boyfriend because like I like girls. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I mean he's down and he's like cool about it. He's like you know, I would imagine, yeah. Yeah, he's like, yeah, obviously down. Yeah. But you know, he's never like he's like, <laughs> Yeah, you and me. Like, you know, it's like a very Aww. cute vibe he likes that you. he Right, yeah. <laughs> he likes me, yeah. <laughs> But for me, I'm like, I'm like, I don't know how to make this like happen. Like, I always panic. Like, I've like, <laughs> really? I've been like, See, I've that like I'm taking girls home. I'm like, she's, I feel like she's too drunk. Like, I don't want her to wake up in the morning and be like, oh, I regret anything. So I'm always like, you know, with a guy, or like, he's not gonna regret shit. Yeah. You know, like, 
holds a hold of this motherfucker. But I'm fine. like, when it's me and my guy, like, or if it's just you and a girl, you yeah. know, then I'm like, but if I'm like bringing a girl in with my guy, then I just go like, oh my God, is she good? Like, I just start panicking. Okay. And then you're like, where do you start it? And so with a gangbang, that's way more complicated. Like, <laughs> I, I just, even, you just I don't sit even know down how to start and you put your ass in the air and you go, <laughs> let's go. Got one hour. <laughs> how do you compile the group of guys? Yeah, like how, like well, you got to cast it. I mean, we had we we interviewed this one guy named Kenneth a long time ago who um works at this sex house called Hacienda Villa mm. in Brooklyn, and he was like, yeah, he sat in on a casting for his friend. Her his friend who was a woman was like, I really want a gangbang for my birthday, and he's like, well, let's make it happen, and they fucking casted it, and I was like, that's amazing. Oh, so it was like a porn, but like it wasn't on camera. It, it wasn't for camera. It was right. just because she but wanted they casted a it. Yeah, like, it was a live like, experience. Right. Like, yeah immersive <gasps> yeah that is so cool yeah because i'm like oh all these fantasies you know porn uh i don't know why i was thinking about this like um, i never want a man to ever make fun of visualization ever again because i'm like you fucking visualize fucking people all goddamn day right you right. do it too Bill. Yeah, yeah. um uh that was just an afterthought but um but yeah there's so many like fantasy scenarios that are depicted in porn that i'm like how do you get that to fucking happen in real life the three-way i'm good at um and but the yeah the gangbang thing i mean that's you know a leap i'm like a single i'm not even sleeping with one person so i need to like do what that first. How, how many people can consti- constitutes a gangbang five i think four? I, I think honestly three plus three guys and a girl i think three, yeah three guys and a girl yeah would be a gangbang or are there any you know, additional little women in this gangbang i don't know but i think four no, is, like, would be a real four gangbang. guys sound great yeah. yeah four guys in one you well yeah. i don't th- <laughs> if it's only men you're title. casting i don't think that has is would necessarily be that difficult well it would be difficult for you to make it say right well it's, well, it's, a, it's a, it, well i think the problem is that it's illegal right so is like it? If, well, I well mean, when like, it's not for money well, when it's well, when it's not on camera like so that's yeah. is it illegal thing. when it's not on camera well because if you're paying the people that you're casting oh, right. then pay, that's yeah, prostitution yeah, yeah. which is well you can't you gotta which is just bullshit. be like i just feel like because if they pussy. filmed it then like suddenly it's like totally fine right. but like that would be if we ever do get to a place in our society where we are understanding that that is not a big deal right that one would be, day it'd be a cool like business model you're like <laughs> you know it's like actually so a kink my first gangbang that i did was for a kink and um this great company in san francisco yeah yeah i like their videos yeah they and are, i like they show the conversation oh before they, the kink which is a missing piece they treat you like so so good you good know? that's good oh this wasn't actually my first one i guess this was maybe it was a little bit farther into this <laughs> i did a few <laughs> but uh it was for this site called fantasy gangbang and it's a female director and so she goes like you know what do you what's your fantasy like, yeah not actually just like, asking you right like what like not just like you want to get gang banged but like do you want them to be like fire fire like you know what's your like yeah. what's your yeah. little kink you got going on and so i wanted to be a um uh, virginal sacrifice to like a cult. Ooh, <laughs> like, oh, that's a great. good one. It was really good cool. One. They built this whole set for me. They cooked this massive oh, like the meal. Bell the ball. For, like yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> they cooked we shot, wait, a like, meal an old seventies you... horror film. It was that's really really cool. really neat. Yeah. Did you eat after or before? No, the eating was not. It was for the the guys. It was basically we did this cool shot where like they kind of bring me out and like it's all these guys in cloaks and they're they're like you know eating and it they kind of eating it like disgustingly. You know, right, like ravenous. Kind of, it was like a little, you know, pre thing while I'm like, and then they like pour this like wine on me. Nice. But that day, I actually had a, uh, I had a torn asshole. Um, so I <laughs> take it. What does a gal do? I called in with a torn butt. asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I tore my butthole today. No, it's like the least day I want to tear my butthole. That sounds <laughs> very painful. I tore my asshole once I had to go to the ER. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. More fiber, man. You really yeah. gotta eat a lot of fiber. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I like here's one to turn, turn me on a corn husk or oh, celium husk. I just celium took husk. some right before I came here. <laughs> nice. Nice. I didn't Keep know what we'd be getting strong. into, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that sucks. Well, I, I, it had happened like a month before, so I'd taken like a break from like anal and stuff, but... I was like, okay, like, I think I was feeling fine. I, th- I thought everything was good. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like a terrible tear or anything, you know, it was just a little painful. And I was like, this is unsafe to work with. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I like went to the, I flew up to kink and then I went to go out, like, re- you know, do my final little cleaning before the scene and blood starts coming out. Oh, God. And I was like, oh, man, oh no, oh no. Man. And I could feel it. And I was like, fuck, like, it's not better. Yeah. But I'm like, I flew up. They flew up six guys and mm. me. Well, can you just do it in the other hole? They built a whole 
set. There is a, I'm like, I mean, what am I getting? I'm not going to be like, sorry guys, like all this money, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going home, you know? Like, right. I'm like, I can't do that. Like, how about I an know- anus stand in? Wait. Oh yeah. I mean, if you just do a close up on the asshole, we're not. You're not gonna know. Did but you with- have to do DP or anal? Like, could you just do vaginal? I guess, but That's I mean, a great it's hole. kink. It's kink. It's right. a gangbang. Yeah. yeah. There's six guys. It. You need anal. three holes. Yeah. Right. I mean, yeah. yeah. It was just well. Luckily, I knew like all the guys in that scene. I was like, I worked with them before. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I like knew all of them. We'd all like work together a million times. See, that's uh, my other fantasy. All the guys, like multiple guys that I fucked in one room, wa- yes. fucking me. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. That's because they like fun. all know what they're getting into. Yeah. Right? I like that most like, people's nightmare is Christina's fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> Certain ones <laughs> don't get together. I never want them to see something that they like about you too, right? And then yeah. like, but there might be something different. Yeah, like that's cute. No, I, like, <laughs> I, I, I fuck with that. I get that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he was, you know. So I just go out to the guys and I'm like, hey, listen. This is the situation. Company meeting. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, I'm you know, usually I'm very anti lube. I'm like, that's why God gave you spit. Um, <laughs> fuck yes. lube. It's disgusting. Even Babeland lube? So I just. Like water based? Uh, For your no, butthole? Oh, I sticky. spit you do. Okay. Yeah, it just is sticky. Spit. Yeah. Just yeah. spit. It's yeah. way better. It's spit is way... hotter, but sometimes it's just not enough for anal, I feel. Yeah, I know. Especially if you, you're you fucked up, then you got to be like, oh, God, I have no spit. You know, yeah. it's happened to me before, but. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are pros. They got yeah. plenty of spit. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I love a man who can spit. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, okay, you know, like just like this time, I actually like I need lube like in the butt. Like yeah. I don't if I was like if I see a dick going towards my butthole and there is not lube on it, I'm going to freak the fuck out because like we need this lubed up so hard because I'm in a fragile state. Yeah, and I'm like, Aww. can everyone just be like respectful and you know? <laughs> yeah, and and of course, like you know, they're all like they're all top guys. Yeah. I'm friends with them. I've worked with them a million times. I trust them. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, we got you. Like, Aww, that's so nice. It was really sweet. And I was really, really scared. Like, I was like, this is going to be bad, bad, bad. And that was actually, I think, that scene was when I go, I think I'm done with porn. Not because it was bad, but because it was like, I felt like that was the pinnacle. Yes. The scene was just so good. It was just everything that I, and it was like the craziest stuff that you could be doing. Did you come during it? Oh yeah. Did you come great. when you shoot? Yeah, I know. Yeah, nice. Course. For See, the most part. Not talk. always. I mean, okay. You know. What happens if you Sometimes start bleeding? Sometimes you gotta make, yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> What happens in what? What happens if you start bleeding on set? Do they have to stop it or do they have oh, protocol? Oh yeah, that'd be a big What's, deal. That's like, yeah. That's what I was wondering. Be a, safety? It's, it's safety. And, and also, it's, that's another category. It's legality. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of the credit card companies and stuff if there's any kind of um a discharge a that isn't that isn't um like huh? jizz yeah like <sighs> pee a lot of times is banned really but, and it's like the credit card companies that let people buy it yeah won't they, let you buy porn with piss in it and blood in it yeah like yeah. Period, like which is crazy because i feel like I think we need to normalize period sex. Yeah, because not enough men are. Well, and that's with a different because that's not and an that's open a, that's wound. That's my horniest time of the month. I know it's yeah. really cruel. That's not that's an really open cruel wound. Trick. That's like a completely different type of blood. It doesn't. It logically, it doesn't make any sense because right. obviously, an open wound. Yes, that is dangerous. It's yeah. more dangerous. Right? Yeah. No, it's definitely more dangerous. Yeah. You're at a much higher risk of. Yeah, blood of passing, course. You know, STDs and everything like that, especially the worst ones. You know, that you're gonna be able to get. So, it's definitely. But we have with period blood. Uh, but that's just the society we live in. Has, I think we need that. That needs to be its own thing on porn. Yeah, yeah I is agree. that is that a thing? Like, do do people so people don't shoot uh, like period sex scenes on porn? I'm sure they do, but not like it's got to be on it. like some clip site or something. Yeah. Uh, I've never actually seen any. I, there's got to be. Some, I've never but, either. Actually, now that you mentioned it, yeah, I me know either. They will always like any kind of. But like, I'll see a guy eat cereal out of girl's like, asshole. Any Mike's actually day. looking it up right now for yeah, us. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's been working on it. I'm like, porn. there's. I mean, there's all kinds of porn on the internet, but I just know yeah. that a lot of the pay platforms won't let you yeah. like use it, which is crazy. It's like, yeah, you're so. That's so fucked up. So annoying. This is society just keeping us down. Uh huh. It is. It is. It is. Um, Have you ever been presented with a scenario to shoot that you were like, mm, nope? Yes, but What's I like did the- it anyway. Oh. That's, that's my personality. <laughs> I'm a gal. <laughs> Pretty much every day. I'd be like, yeah, I know. I don't think I want to do that. And they'd be like, you can do it. And I'd be like, okay, fine. I can do it. <laughs> can I? What was like? What's one that sticks out? 
well, one of my last scenes, which was in that um, contract, that one was just a, it was a dirty talking movie and Ooh. I don't dirty talk. Uh -oh. I'm just, I'm not good at it. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> really? And it's crazy because I don't shut the fuck up normally, but even like being on this like tour and like doing, you know, DJing on this like comedy thing, they give me a mic and they're like, oh, you should talk to the crap more. And I'm like, you know, I'm like, I, yeah. no, I, got, no, nothing. I got nothing. I'm like, yeah. So when the spotlight's you on you. You guys having a good time? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. We do, you teach her? Oh, cool. So okay. Getting fucked up. That's yeah. about, that's all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like that. I feel like with like dirty talk, I just feel very put on the spot. I'm good at like responding. Like if a guy's really good at dirty talk. Yeah. And he's like, oh, tell me this. Like, you know, asking me, like, I can get really into that and sure. feedback and do when it. When he guides you? Yes. Oh, God. That's hot. Love yeah. that. But Ugh. I'm certainly not going to be the driving force in right. the dirty talk, you know? And, like, yeah. sometimes you've got to do, like, the, the VR stuff they started doing recently. Yeah. Which mm -hmm. Do they do VR where the woman wears the fucking head, the, the camera? And the guys, like, not that the guy's getting, fu but, like, VR porn is always shot from the guy's perspective. Ew. Yeah, you're so right. Because like, Ryan never Triller we had on, and he was like, VR porn was, like, my biggest category that I would film. It always had me film. And I'm like, they never fucking do that. I would love to watch porn where the woman is wearing the camera. Right. Yeah, no, that's kind of fucked up. Because I've done, like, a girl-girl girl yeah. with a guy. Yeah. But, like, never see Oh, <laughs> no, I want that job. I want to yeah. be the girl wearing the camera. Right, right. Just getting like eaten out. Well, because the thing is, like, mm. the guys don't have to talk. That's the, what's the craziest thing. Because, like, they're like, the guy can't, like, really touch you unless you tell them to touch you. Really? You know, they, they're not really supposed to talk. Because, so you're literally looking at a camera and you just got to, like, dirty talk to the like camera. Like, it's the love of your life. And then you're not getting any connection with the person. And it's like. How far is the camera from the guy's eyes? kind of like I mean sometimes like they just gotta be back sometimes I mean, sometimes you can still kind of see them but it's very disconnected it's kind Shit. of like you know they're like if they're like laying down like the camera's like kind of you know it's like kind yeah. of always blocking their face yeah but that would be great because uh, like if I got to wear that you just like you just lay back and you like get eaten out and like fucking yeah. you don't have to like yeah I feel like more women and need women to get into VR. I think because it's like it's every, everything is about money in the end right. in America. So it has to be like more women have to be into VR because when you think of who's into VR, it's more uh, more men, I guess. Yeah, but I like VR. Yeah, like, I've, I have a VR headset. You have a VR headset. I've done VR before. Yeah. But, but also too, you can watch VR porn, like even just porn from the woman's perspective, like fucking a guy or getting fucked by a guy. Right. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> like if you I'm just imagining a woman do it like getting getting it from behind she has to look back and you're just seeing this guy like yeah. <laughs> like the camera angles her like hey how you doing back there I don't like, know I feel like you gotta be like super straight to want to watch the, from the girl's perspective though yeah cause even like I'm like I, <laughs> you gotta be hetero as fuck because I feel like even some of my straight girlfriends are like oh yeah I only watch the girl in porn like the girl yeah. that watch girl girl like mm, porn even yeah. though they only fuck guys in real life you know right, right. they want to see a girl get fucked so i'm like yeah you would have you have got to be like yeah i just want to watch a dude just like yeah. jerk it off like, yeah, yeah. like yeah. a guy's like, just a walking <laughs> dick to me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, how how have you found so so you got out of porn six years ago and you're djing you're on the road it's gotta be so much fucking fun you're hanging out with some of the best comedians on the fucking planet i mean comedians are such a goddamn good time um do you d d does that does your your past career and porn like like not creep up on you because it's not like something to be creeped up on but like do people remind like do people like stop you in the street they're like oh I want to, hey oh i mean there's even like the other night when i wasn't allowed to perform at dayton it was funny because i went out to the buses so i'm just running around and you know i'm having a great time i got a paid night off i just yeah, get to, i cool. got to start smoking weed early in the day because nice. I, I don't got shit to do yeah. you know nice. i'm just having a great time so yeah. i'm in no way concerned everyone got me flowers <laughs> they got me they got me gifts <laughs> chocolate like, Bitch, i don't give a yeah fuck. everyone's nice. like oh my god like we're so sorry because like i couldn't go up on stage at the end like when they bring <laughs> everyone up so they're like here's some flowers i'm like nice. you could have just told me like don't go up on stage because i <laughs> would have went right over my head yeah so but you know, so for the but then I would go out to the buses just to grab something, and there's like this, like you know, one of the venue people's, like, and not not the guy who decided right. Right. I couldn't be there. You know, he's just someone who works there. Yeah, but it's this older gentleman. So I come up and I'm like, oh hey, like oh, I'm like couldn't find my pass. And I'm like, oh look at. Oh, like, you know, and he was like, he was like, oh, I know. And I'm like, I wasn't even on the show. Like, yeah. it's not like you saw me up there and you were yeah. like, oh, yeah, that's the DJ. Like, yeah. you know, right, like, right, right. I was like, damn, like, that was. Damn, dude. You just put me on the spot. I was like, 
Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you so get amazing. that, but I don't really mind as long as like I think there's such a way to say it to someone. Like sure. I've had people come up and go like, "Yo, I fucking love your porn." I'm like, "That's nice. cool." Yeah, yeah, because that I would respect, and like they're owning it, they own it, and they're not being weird about it. The second a guy would be like weird about it, I'd be like, "Get the fuck out of my." Well, face. as long as you can see that they see you as a human being, yeah, yeah. I Which think that's really porn. not a high expectation, no. but it surprisingly is. It, it, it is in today's world, and also like we're we're over consuming like america is very over consume 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 dopamine dope like fake dopamine and i feel like with guys guys and porn addiction like one of the things that's interesting esther perel talks about this porn doesn't expect anything of you right. so it's like when i masturbate a lot of times i'll come harder than if i'm during sex because right. i'm in my head so much depending on the situation but i'm like i do get get that but it's like oh because of that we're going for this easy thing and we're not like actually doing the work to be like how do i be present in a sexual situation but that's the f guy's fault i guess like the guy has to want to be on top of that and like right. recognize it no that's 100 um, percent. i mean even for me like getting out of the business something i'm like i probably should go to therapy for this to be honest really um but just something i've noticed is that you know where you you're saying like you know you can get really in your own head you can be so focused because there's no distractions when right. you're like masturbating yeah and but with porn you know you never turn your brain off mm -hmm. you're always where's the camera where's this like oh my hair is in the way like you know there's a million things you're thinking of and you're performing so you might be enjoying it it could be a fun day you could have a great orgasm but your brain isn't off right. you're constantly thinking and you're performing and so getting out of the business you know because for years i really didn't have much sex outside of porn because i was working every day right so right. I'm getting even fucked. when i'm I was good. like i dated a guy in the industry and like yeah. you know we both like he'd do like three scenes that day and we were like can you just like hold me yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh that's really sweet yeah, yeah i mean like, that's what a relationship that's like the beauty of an intimate romantic relationship is like that closeness like that right and it doesn't have to just be sex especially when that's what you do for a living and you sure. don't see that that is just an intimate act. It, I think sex is very intimate and it, yeah. and it should be, but I don't think it has to be. Right. No, I think there can be some yeah. sex that's very non -intimate. Sometimes you just want to get fucking railed and yeah. not look at the guy. Yeah, and that's and that's okay. And I think that's it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a, maybe an int intimacy with yourself right yeah to like have that moment well i think that's why like porn i don't know it's weird i feel like men the way men consume porn it's just such a i don't know why i feel this way like i'm like am i i'm always asking like am i projecting on here but um i've not been watching porn lately just because i'm like i want to get off on my imagination just because i want to dive into that and like expand it um i think my problem is just getting laid in general i just need to get laid in general i think yeah because it's like easy to watch porn too often and just kind of I I, I, I I don't I never I barely ever watch it but yeah. I but I I'm fucked up from like trying to get out of my head yeah mm -hmm. in yeah. like normal sex right where you know because especially I would always get nervous like oh what does this guy expect from me right like does he think because I remember like my ex that was the married one that was so crazy you know because he'd always like of course he'd go watch my porn and then be upset about it I'm like just don't watch it then yeah but you know he's like why do why do why is it like when you have sex with me like why is that how you have sex on camera oh, and i'm like well different. because how annoying what, he, yeah. the, he thought it was too similar and he, he oh. like he was like you know it's like and i'm like well that's because i'm good at it yeah, <laughs> so I, yeah. you know like it's kind of like oh, so it's yeah. like you know if you're an actress like you know if someone doesn't go like oh you know when you like pretended to drink that cup of hot coffee why is it like when you actually drink hot coffee yeah, yeah right because it's right. good acting right. you know? <laughs> i'm in it yeah and so you know but i was always like yes it's totally different but yes there is also something that's similar and that's yeah. why you know i'm a good performer but then so that really got me in my head about stuff where I, then i'd go oh well i don't want to uh, am I overperforming? Yeah. Or am I underperforming? Mm, yeah. Where I suddenly go, I don't give a shit because there's no camera, and I'm like, fuck you. Fuck like, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm all about trying to get off. <sighs> so I kind of always have this. I mean, even now to this day, and it's been years, and it's still something. I mean, it's gotten much, much better. Good, yeah. But it's still something I like. Do have to kind of like, you know, I like to smoke a little weed before sex. That always kind of helps me chill. If I'm like dead sober, especially like, coming off some Adderall, you know. Oh God, <laughs> I'm just like, oh no, recently. oh no, yeah, yeah. And if, I do it for six years and you know i fucking love him he's my best friend we live together you know oh, like yeah. there's so much comfortability there and you know our sex life is great but then at the same time there's just those times where i, I can't really I, I start panicking and going like who am i like my car cruise the person or like the porn star right yeah so is that a conversation you've had with your boyfriend yeah we yeah we talked about it mm -hmm. um 
And I feel like he's he's a kind of an anxious person. So yeah. I feel like he's kind of the same way, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's sweet. And it's cute because a lot of girls I know from the business that were, you know, kind of like still big in the business when I was getting out. They were maybe a little younger than me. Yeah. Um, but I'm still friends with a bunch of those girls. And, you know, at the time when I was kind of getting out, they were like, oh, this is great. And now seeing a bunch of them years later, they all, we all go, oh, like we all have this problem. Like we don't, you know? Oh, yeah, and yeah. so it's this really interesting thing where you think all oh, these girls, like, oh, we're just like sex fiends and we're all just going like oh my god like I don't know like how to even have sex with my boyfriend oh <laughs> yeah it's hard to be vulnerable and intimate sometimes yeah well it's so funny because even like non-porn star women I feel like worry about being performative because of porn because of porn and also like guys expectations yeah it's just it's a yeah it, you, it takes work you kind of have to boldly go after being present right yes you know yes you have you have to just Grab the grab it by the balls. yeah grab it by the balls and be be with yourself the whole time yeah is there like a porn star therapist because there's like there's like a there's like a therapist that specializes in like comedians basically or like that we find out and then like all the comedians go to that same therapist oh my god I need that if there is <laughs> one not, if you like, guys have anyone that's on the podcast that tells you about it please let me know yeah 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 because that's always the weird thing too is like you can go into a therapist and they could be like open minded right but like they're not but, gonna really get it they're yeah. still human that's yes that, exactly that's the problem like it's such a specific thing like how it's almost like how do you give advice about something that's not like a traditional human experience right it's right. a specific one yeah like they're just people that are never gonna like get your you know struggle or like they're never gonna understand your thought process yeah and they could sit there all day and go okay you know i'm, I'm open-minded i accept you and i'm trying to help you work through this but they just don't get it and i'm not gonna pay you know a ton of fucking money to sit there and tell someone about shit that they don't know anything about right. and then have them give me advice like, how can on you it. help me yeah, yeah. Right. explain right. more just straight to them yeah, yeah. So maybe maybe that'll be the next phase of my career yeah i'll, I'll become a yeah. I'll become a therapist yeah i feel <laughs> like, like, that's like dad a, guess like, the it. fuck what <laughs> yeah guess yeah. the fuck what dad <laughs> i got a real job <laughs> <laughs> so um so um we have to wrap up but i wanted to ask what do you want to promote like where can we find more of you like what are you still selling merch like you're on the bus tour with Bert like what where can we find you yeah I'm on the bus tour with Bert I don't know when this was is gonna come out probably but, like two weeks yeah. yeah so yeah it'll be done by then but okay. yeah it definitely will be lots of fun videos and stuff to check out I got some new music coming out nice but yeah you can find me on socials it's just at Carter Cruz everywhere Carter like Carter and <laughs> nice. Cruz like cruise ship <laughs> like Beyonce Giselle Knowles say- Carter <laughs> Same I used to name. say Carter like the president because like Jimmy Carter but yeah. I'm like now in like 2022 it's like that was like 10 years ago and I'm like you say like now Carter. like everyone's like who the fuck is Jimmy Carter and he wasn't even like that big of a president it was just like it sounded funny to say <laughs> it it's not like I'm like a I big like fan was, of Jimmy Carter like he was a pretty big president <laughs> I feel like he was just say like more memorable ones like Beyonce Jay-Z Carter like Carter Beyonce yeah. Giselle knows Carter Carter's or like uh, or like Lil Wayne you know yeah Jimmy yeah Carter, exactly you know? like, I also yeah. think that people Tucci. maybe can just spell Carter yeah yeah I mean, no it's trying to spell cru- with a K, well, it's right? It's the cruise one that always gets everyone. They spell it with a Z. Oh, like, okay. Uh, I'm obviously like extremely ship. white. Right. <laughs> it would right, be right, offensive right. if it was spelled with a Z. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for coming on. Thank, Thank you. For having you. Me. Uh, this has been Guys We Fuck, the anti slut shaming podcast. We'll talk to you next Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it was so nice to meet you.